So just a quick one today. It's one of those days, I'm afraid, where I just want to lean this chair all the way back and take a nap. Well, at least I hope this video is a quick one. If I could drag it out to eight minutes for the tasty ad revenue, even better. But I thought I'd just give some opinions on the whole Mercedes protesting the lap 48 Max taking Lewis into the next Postcode Pro Gamer move. And I know I said last time out I'm getting bored of the drama, but this is the sort of stuff you want me to do, so I'll do it. And I know what will inevitably come after that last statement. If you give us what we want, where's the Roberto Moreno story time thing? I've told you. 100k and I'll do the video. Which at the current rate of growth is... About two and a half years from now. Also, this video is just going to be talking head video podcast stuff. I might put some B-roll in the background, but just really just stick this on in the background while you do your schoolwork or have your lunch or whatever, because apparently that's how most people consume this sort of stuff anyway. So what this whole debate does, it opens up two lines of inquiry. One is, does it prove that Max had no intention of making that corner? And two, it asks some questions directed in the direction of the FIA and its revolving door of stewards. So for Max's steering inputs, you can sit there and go, he made no attempt, but there is the case where, and I know this might actually make some of you unable to breathe, he just went in too hot. That that's that's just that's just a, a, an option here. But at the same time you can say, and I'm not saying this before people start kicking off, this is what Hamilton did at Silverstone, and Max refusing to yield is what resulted in the wipeout there. This time round, the roles were reversed, and Hamilton bailed, which meant that a repeat of that same accident didn't happen if you can follow me. As it goes from Max going in a bit too hot, there is some unofficial telemetry being shown on YouTube and at the point Hamilton is turning in, he was doing about 160 kilometers an hour. Max was at 175. For Americans, that's 99 miles an hour versus 108 or so. Uh, it's about 1.6 miles or so to the kilometer. Again, this is all hypothetical, presenting both sides of the argument and not my actual opinion, and I shouldn't have to make these disclaimers, but this is the state of things. I'm just trying to put all options available on the table and allow you to see both sides of an argument. I even said in the previous video that while it did look a bit naughty on Max's side, he shouldn't get a penalty. Shouldn't get a penalty. And then got called a Hamilton fanboy for it. So I said something in Max's favour but I'm still biased to the other guy. Can you see why I'm trying to move away from this sort of stuff now? <laughs> but anyway, on the other side, you've got the questions that need asking in the direction of the stewards, because they admitted at the time, and I didn't realize this until people pointed it out in the previous video, that they actually had no access to Max's onboard and no investigation was necessary, which I find baffling. You've got an incident to look at, which is very similar to one that happened earlier in the season. And for that accident, the onboards for both drivers involved were available right there and then. But for this one, you've got the same two drivers involved, the third accident this season between the two of them to look at, and only one camera angle is available. And it takes until Tuesday lunchtime following the race for that camera angle to become available. And I'm not screaming conspiracy here, I'm just saying that I mean, this is fact. They didn't have it at the time, but they have it now. So you have all of these camera feeds, all of this technology, all this other stuff in this mission control thing that they've got at the FIA, and it's another 48 hours or so for that footage to be discovered, for want of a better phrase. I mean, we do have that footage now, Sky Sports has put it up, other people have put it up, so the camera was obviously recording, so shouldn't that footage already be available to pull it up on demand? That way, the FIA could have looked at it, made the decision in the race or in the sort of hour or so post-race, and that could have been the matter done and dusted. But on the other hand, technology has its limitations, and that onboard footage probably got sent to some sort of data bank that they've had to spend 48 hours sifting through to find said footage. And like I said before, I'm glad I don't have their job, but I still maintain I'd love to sit in the office while they investigate things and look at stuff and do whatever it is they do. But now that the footage has surfaced, Mercedes are using it to get clarification, which they are allowed to do under the rules. It's what Ferrari did at Canada in 2019, Red Bull at Silverstone earlier this year, and also Aston Martin earlier this year at Hungary with uh, Vettel's you know, fuel flow or fuel gauge, whatever it was. They, they can't ask for a review because new evidence has emerged that was not available at the time. But while Ferrari's new evidence in Montreal was Karun Chantok said Seb did nothing wrong and Red Bull had Albon turn laps over and over and over again to prove attempted murder, Mercedes have gone with, we've got the footage that you should have had to start with. 
And again, there is probably a reason as to why the FIA didn't have that footage available, but Mercedes has got a point. Why wasn't it? It's tricky. If Max were to get a penalty, it'll either be a five second penalty, which would drop into third and make it Mercedes 1 2 for the race and close that points gap ever so slightly more, or it'll be a grid drop for the next race in Qatar on Sunday. And since Mercedes is appealing something that happened in the race, I think a five second penalty is what would happen because it happened in the race. But that's me, but you know, a grid drop is also an option. Yeah. My opinion, yours might differ, but this is only if Max gets a penalty. But Austria sets a precedent here because in the instance of the penalties handed out there, the car that got penalised kept it on track. But because both cars ended up in Argentina as a result of this one, then who knows, Mercedes might actually have a case. But anyway, I've laid everything out on the table, and if you think what I've said has anything interesting behind it and got you thinking, then give it one of these. And if you want to see more stuff like this, or the history of motorsport stuff, or how motorsport works, the stuff I'm known for, really, then click subscribe and get L Bell on as well if you're not already subscribed, so you get all the latest from this channel. Big up to the Patreon Massive, and if you want to join them in giving me a monthly tip at a more personal level, or you know, just join in Discord and stuff, there'll be links to Patreon, Discord, and vague directions to my social media all down in the description underneath this video. Until next time, I've been Aiden Mord. Have a great afternoon, morning, night, wherever you are. I'm going to stop waffling and go and do that other stuff. So, goodbye.